out here spraying, a little breeze coming up. Looks like we might have some rain moving in. Hopefully we can get this field done. He's coming to fill up with spray right now though. I'm going to show you how this thingamajig works. These are our tanks. Groundbreaking stuff. Uh, these are holding water right now. Sometimes they hold uh, fertilizer when we're putting fertilizer on. When we made them fill, we made it so we could fill from the rear. So if we're loading at the same time, a tender truck could be out here uh, doing its thing, filling both at the same time. And we also got the fill down here. This is where we always had it. We mix all the chemicals in this guy. It goes through here flows and then you got a bypass so this is where you run the fresh water and this is where you run the chemicals suck it out it goes through these guys and into the sprayer all these things here are just different chemicals we're having just for simplicity's sake right now is that plugs into our electric tarps that go on our, our uh, grain hoppers that we haul corn with so we have power back here without having to have a battery and that way it never runs dead it's just always running off the truck that's how we pump off on our spray rig and it's got that nice used look right now this is the field out here if you look a few videos back this is the one we vt'd and maybe some of those drone shots you can see some of those clumps of uh, corn clumps it looks like clumps of weeds or something but that's actually some clumps of corn that's volunteer corn from the corn that fell over last year it's not enough to hurt any yield out here just kind of as a cosmetic thing right now um, the stuff we have in it won't kill it because we we're just not going after it. We're not worried about it being an issue because when everything grows up, it'll outgrow that and look nice when it's all tasseled out. It's just right now you can kind of notice, especially I noticed with those drone shots. Brother John's running the sprayer. He's over the hill. The wind wasn't blowing as bad. It just kind of picked up here lately. But everything around us, well, except for this is a regular cornfield over here. Everything else around us is grass, any breeze. It's, it's not going to affect anything bordering us right now. So uh, we're finishing up here today. We got a good chance of rain tonight, so uh, we spray 20 might be put on hold here for a little bit, but a little bit of moisture wouldn't hurt as long as it ain't severe, because things are looking pretty good right now, so we'll go with that. One of the things that makes this trailer extra handy is you usually got to move the pivots, so the guy driving the truck's got extra jobs to do since he's waiting sometimes. Put this guy on here so we can he can go do other things for the spray guy, so the spray guy doesn't have to start the pivots up all the time. Things at 98 still starts like it's brand new. Doesn't ride like it though. But for those of you new to the channel, um, if you notice, we're angling the row. We're not driving right down the row, and you're thinking, Rob, you're running over a bunch of corn. Well, on these hills, what you can't see is maybe they're a little severer than what the camera shows. They're not terrible, but they're not, it's definitely not smooth. But it's hard to keep that sprayer down a 30 inch row going over all these trains and, and bumps. And they are, they do have a feature now that the sprayer can supposedly drive it, but it's still hard for it to maintain. So we just cut our losses angle it and it runs over a little bit of the corn i don't know if you can see that right there but after it gets grown up and uh the ear flexes to the one next to it we really that's the only way we like to do it you do a better job spraying yeah you might see a few tire tracks through the field but a better job spraying is worth more than you know potentially running over a huge line of rows because when you if you veer off and you start pinging those going right down the road, you're going to run over a lot more corn than you are angling it. So that's what we do on our hills. Some of our level fields will will uh, go down the road, but in the hills we just angle it. So we're going to keep uh, moseying our way over to the pivot. It looks like it's got a little ways to go yet. So I'm going to run to the end here and speed it up faster. 
That way, my brother John doesn't have to wait on it to get out of the way. Wait on it to get out of the way. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Well, we're taking the truck home. Morning guys, we had a heck of a windy day yesterday. Uh, there was some wind gust up. I was looking at the weather reports, some wind gust up around Broken Bow up to 70 mile an hour, which is kind of north of us. Uh, 35, 40 miles away the crow flies, and I don't know what around here, but I think you know some 60 gusts, but it was a sustained wind yesterday. Pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So they're be interesting to see how the corn did. Just pulling out of Sumner here now. You can kind of tell it's leaning. But luckily I think it's short enough it shouldn't have actually broke anything. But no, it didn't do much yesterday, but watch the wind blow. I was gonna have a video out to you earlier. Uh, I got home to edit it yesterday and I just didn't quite exactly like the way I had it set up and was describing things about Dicamba, so I'm gonna kind of try to redo it, try to get my point across. Feel like I kind of got a little confusing, maybe with my first take. Just to make sure I did it somewhat right. So we'll see how the day goes. If I get there and there's a bunch of people there, then I might not do it right. But <sighs> gotta get the good stuff going. Cooled off. It was like 90s earlier this week, and now it's like 50 out. So back to coffee. This is scary. working on a sprayer to spray their pastures with. So we better not bother them. Well, right now I'm heading out to relieve little brother John from the sprayer. So heading out to the field now. All right, let's see what this thing's going on here. Can't believe I'm letting him drive my pickup. Got the Rockstar mixer. All right, we're starting to field here. Just filled up. Let it know how full I am. Make sure I'm on the right field. It knows kind of the border I'm closest to, so it pulls up that first. What's nice is it keeps track of your weather info for record keeping. I think it looks legit for now. So I got my borders done here. I wasn't filming because I actually have to drive the thing. What a drag. Now I'm making my first pass through the field. We still have our line saved from the first time we sprayed, so I kind of know where I need to be on this field at least. And uh, I'm gonna be going alongside the pivot here. I'm making one pass here, and then I'll make another pass alongside the pivot. That way, uh, Gordon run the truck. He's gonna come out on that four-wheeler, start the motor up, get it moving in reverse. That way I don't have to stop spraying. It has the automatic boom, boom height, so it'll automatically raise and lower your raise and lower the booms as it need be. So when you got to go through the ditch, the only thing is you usually got to slow down if you really got a severe ditch to let them work. And if it's really bad, I usually kind of take over and kind of get a head start on if they need to start going up or down. But like right now, I got a ditch right here. can even see that how they're doing it but it sure helps me out anyway that way I'm not having to watch them constantly good morning again guys hopefully I can uh, finally get some of my the camera thoughts here on tape so uh, let's head to the shop see what we can find out so moving on to Dicamba 
What is it? That gamma is an old, old, old chemical that uh, has been around since the late 60s, I believe, early 70s, around that time frame. I don't know. Any of you guys that know for sure, correct me below. But it's been around a long time, and I believe one of the first names of it was Banville, as far as I know, anyway. Banville for use in crops, corn, stuff like that. Some of the things we got over here, we got Roundup, Warrant, and Ingenia and Fexapan, some of the things that we're going to be using in our, our uh, soybeans this year. And what are these? A lot of people know what Roundup is. It, it used to kill everything, but now it doesn't. Hence, while we're using this, this stuff right here is a residual. And this is what we're going to spray post spray, post meaning uh, beans that are already up. And uh, this is kind of what we plan on spraying. We might get some uh, volunteer corn killer in there as well. This right here is the newest form of dicamba. These Extendamax, or, well, it's not here, but Fexapan and Genia. Did I say, I can't remember, but. This guy right here, this is kind of one of the more original um, formulations of dicamba. This one's, I believe, similar to Banville. I'd have to look to, for sure. So that legally can't be sprayed on beans, but physically it probably could. Um, we got some uh, more status over there, which we're spraying post on our corn. All that does is a later formulation that have safeners in it to allow you to spray corn that's taller. But anyway, getting back to what the Ninth Circuit Court in San Francisco, California decided that these newer formulations that were formulated to be less volatile than the older formulations are now illegal. As of right now, we technically can still spray these according to the EPA up until July 31st. We can get rid of the stock what we have in stock sprayed, which I'm thankful for because that just put us whole in a whole whirlwind for the past week here, which has been kind of crazy, trying to figure out, can we spray it, can we not, what's, or legally can we spray it, I should say. To describe it, this form of dicamba is the old version. It's highly volatile, meaning it can drift easily. What, what it tends to do is it doesn't like temperature inversions at all because it'll if you're spraying on a calm day and, or something and it'll actually raise in the atmosphere kind of drift over and then get on to the neighbors or, or a potential non-target crop kind of been what people have been arguing over lately is a lot of specialty crops out there that have been complaining that this is drifting over on them the thing that's weird and i don't get and it does and i think it's just a common sense thing is they're taking off the new formulations that are less volatile, but this is still available. Status, I mean, you can spray that on your corn. I don't understand why, I don't think, I think it's like a lot of things nowadays. People are just looking at stuff as surface value and they're not looking into it, but they formulate their own opinions and now we got this mess. The stuff that people put a lot of money into, put a lot of science to, to, to make better, they're taking off the market but we can still take this old stuff and spray it. Now, I don't want to lose the old stuff either because it's still useful, especially that over there we use a lot on post on our corn. But this is a big deal for us because Roundup isn't killing everything anymore, especially in our area, water, hemp, and palmer amaranth is something that grows really fast and it can cause a lot of problems. And we do put pre-emerges out a lot, meaning we spray, we try, it's a spray that tries to keep stuff from growing at all. You still get escapes whenever. And so that's kind of been an issue for us. And so this was kind of a savior. Now there is another formulation of soybeans out there called Enlist or E3 that are coming down the pike and are kind of already out there, which uses a 2,4-D formulation, which isn't a lot different from that, but you can't cross because it'll still kill everything. But um, it's something that's similar to the form of dicamba. Um, and so that is still an option, but I've heard mumblings that they're going after it in the Ninth Circuit Court out there again. So if they take that away from us, we could be really hosed out here. That's a concern that we have. And another concern I've been having is seeing farmers responses that say, oh, you can do it without dicamba. Well, they're farmers in totally different locations. And so what I hate when people say is, you know, I can do it, so anybody else can do it. The geography across this country is totally different. So what works on farms here doesn't work farms there. I, I see it from here to my in-laws in Northwest Iowa. It's, it's a totally different game. 
Well, maybe not totally, but it's a, there's a lot of differences. I've learned not to say what works for my farm can work for every farm. And that's the problem, biggest issue is what I'm having with this whole debate is, you know, a lot of people are self-righteous and think they're the best farmer in the world. Well, what's working over here doesn't work for this guy over here. And so when we kind of try to make laws that broad brushstroke the whole country, that's the issue I'm having. We need to localize this as much as we can, try to figure out ways to make things still work because We've been getting along really good in our small little corner of the world up here. Uh, this has really helped us out. And another way this has really been helping us out is to maintain our no-till and our sustainability and growing regular conventional crops. Um, if it wasn't for these, we would have to go to maybe a more form of cultivation and tillage and things like that to get to try to control weeds in our soybeans. And to me, that's not as sustainable, especially when you farm in some of these hills that we have. Um, it just doesn't work out as well. And some of you could say, well, you don't need to be farming the hills, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're not the boss of me, okay? And that's, I'm, I'm kind of going to put my foot down on people that say things like that. It's like, you're not God. This is a free country the last time I checked. And we can do things well with technology on our farm. We can be sustainable in our hills. We, we, we farm flat ground well as too, but... I'm just saying, that's kind of the biggest issue I have right there. So, uh, so yeah, that was kind of my tangent right there. I'll try to, I want to keep this as family friendly and, and positive as I can, but sometimes I kind of want to speak my piece there too. I hope scientists are still working on formulations that we can go away from maybe these and use safer chemicals in the future, or I shouldn't say safer, but at least um, volatile chemicals that would help us. Because the safety of this, like physically handling, I'm not worried about these guys. What you're getting filled full of in California with all these lawsuits about cancer, everything causes cancer. I've had this stuff, not un intentionally, but get on my hands and everything else, and it, it's not that dangerous, guys. And so I know I'm not a doctor, but you don't have to take all that from me, but I do handle it and I'm not worried about it. I'm more concerned about insecticides and things like that that we might use on our farm. I, I treat them with respect. And uh, I do the best I can, and it's kind of a risk we take in life. So that's kind of my quip about dicamba and those things right there. What I'm more against is people thinking that they can broad, bros broad brushstroke their ideas across the whole country just because they think it's right. And when really we need to be a more local form of how we handle things, I believe anyway, because... That's why they invented states, that's why they invented counties, is just so we can use stuff at a more localized level because when you do things at a whole federal level, it just doesn't work. So that's my thoughts anyway. Hey guys, I really appreciate you watching and listening to my little ramblings here and so hopefully it makes sense. You guys have a great day, every one of you, whether you agree with me or not. So uh, catch you later.